You should be using this video to study for your quiz on lab equipment. It is critically important for you to understand uh, the different pieces of lab equipment that we're using in the lab so that you know what it is that you're doing. When I uh, ask for a certain piece of equipment, you know what I'm talking about. This first one we're going to look at is called a beaker. Beakers are characterized by you know, this shape. You, the ones we have in the lab have this little pour spout that makes pouring easier. Their function is fairly simple. It's simply to store a liquid. The next piece of equipment you need to know is an Erlenmeyer flask. This is a type of flask that has this uh, narrow uh, mouth right there. And what we use Erlenmeyer flasks for, like beakers, they store liquid, as you can see in this picture. But what makes them nice, why we'd use them instead of a beaker, is that they are easily sealable. So on the quiz, I'll expect that you can say that they store liquid and they're easily sealable. We'd want to seal them maybe if we were trying to create a little environment here we didn't want to have any gas exchange or potentially maybe we have a chemical in here that that really stinks or is potentially evaporating and maybe you know having dangerous chemical you know uh, leave the flask we'd want to stop it or some way cover it that's why I'd use a flask over a beaker volumetric uh, flasks again the word flask is there so we know that it's going to be storing liquid uh, the word volumetric whenever you say that word volumetric of course it implies the word volume these hold a very specific volume of fluid so that's their function is that it holds a very specific volume of fluid if you notice if you look at this flask here it has only one line or what we call one calibration what that means is that if i fill this up all the way just to that line exactly. If I fill this entire flask with, you know, to that line, I would know that I have exactly, exactly, exactly 500 milliliters of solution in that volumetric flask because these are calibrated to a very high uh, efficiency. I believe it's uh, two decimal places. So I would know that I have 500.00 milliliters in that flask. If you look at these ones, you can see you'd have if this is filled to the line here, you'd have 25 mils of fluid. Right here, you'd have exactly 50.00 mils, and here you'd have 100.00 mils. So that's the function of a volumetric flask, is that it holds a precise, that word, you know, precise is important there, it's precision, a precise amount of liquid. Funnel should be an easy one, uh, something you've seen before. We use funnels to pour liquid from one container to another without spilling. So that's its function, to allow us to pour liquids from one container to another without spilling. This will be the last piece of glassware you need to know. It's certainly one that you'll be using a lot in the lab. It's called a graduated cylinder. And what we use graduated cylinders for, their function is to determine the volume of a liquid. So if you notice running up the side of the graduated cylinder, it looks much like a ruler. And you can imagine wherever the volume of liquid reaches, you could read and determine what the volume of that liquid is. So we always read, as a little side note, to the bottom of this curved line here, which is called the meniscus. So that's the top of the fluid. That's going to be the meniscus. We read the bottom of that. So if you notice here, we've got our 40 here and our 50. So this to me looks like 41 to, I would call it 43 uh, milliliters of solution. And of course, I'd estimate one decimal, so that'd be 43.0 is what I would guess on that one. If you look over here, at this one, you can see our 70 line and our 80 line. There's 75 right there. So we've got 75, 76, I'd call that maybe 76, 76.1 milliliters. That's the function of graduated cylinder. There are two different devices we'll be using to determine the mass of things in the lab. The first is called a triple beam balance. And the triple beam balance is used very simply. You put the item that you want to weigh, or determine the mass of, right there. And then you simply slide these guys over until the line matches up directly there, at which point you know that you have it balanced and you can determine by reading the scales here how much the mass of that particular item is. So the trillion balance, its function is to determine the mass of something. Same exact function for this guy. The electronic balance also determines the mass of some item. You simply put the item right there and you just press a button for this one because it's electronic and it will tell you right there in the readout display what the mass of that item is. The last piece of equipment on this particular slide is this guy right here called a weighing boat. Imagine if you're trying to determine the mass of a, a liquid or maybe some kind of chemical powder or maybe something that might you know uh, contaminate 
uh, the balance, like uh, the lung from an organism that you're dissecting, uh, you wouldn't want to put those things directly on the balance because they could damage it or, you know, get something stuck on it or just kind of ruin it. You use this item called a weighing boat. You put the weighing boat on the balance first, whichever balance it might be. Then you put the item that you want to determine the mass of in that weighing boat, and you can determine its weight without messing up the balance. That's the function of a weighing boat. So the function is to weigh something without damaging the balance. The important thing to remember when you're using one of these, is a little side note, is that you always want to take in consideration the fact that this weighing boat has some mass. So it'd be very foolish to put this on your balance and put the item in it and then just record whatever number it says here without thinking about the fact that this has some weight to you have to subtract that weight to determine what the actual weight of the item you're uh, determining is. Next piece we're coming to let you know is an eyedropper, and I have a video here to show you how they are used. There's an eyedropper, and we use them. Their function is to transfer liquids from one container to another. So to transfer liquids, that's what we use them for. Just like you might use like a turkey baster, you simply squeeze the air out, insert it into the liquid, release the, uh, the pressure there, the liquid goes up into the eyedropper, you move it to the next container, and it goes in. A little review, what's this container here that I'm taking liquid from? And what's the container that I'm putting liquid in? You should know that from the video. This is a beaker. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. Now let's talk about uh, some pipettes. And these actually have the same uh, function as the eyedropper in that they're transferring liquid. But for some of them, there's a little more. So we're going to go over pipettes, micro pipettes, and volumetric pipettes. So let me cue up this video. And you'll see that for the first one, just the plain old pipette, as I'm showing you in the video there, uh, it has the exact same function as an eyedropper. It's simply for tra transferring liquids, in this case from this beaker, to this piece of glassware, which we know from the video is called a graduated cylinder. So that's all it's doing. It's just to transfer liquid from one to another. Now the micro pipette, uh, the word micro means small. So we're pipetting. We're moving liquid from one container to another, but it's going to be a very small amount. So you'll see that I'm inserting it into the liquid, you'll see how little liquid actually gets transferred onto this, what's this uh, piece of equipment here? This is a weighing boat. You should know that from the video as well. The final piece of equipment you need to know is the volumetric pipette. Remember that word, volumetric means a precise volume, just like that piece of volumetric glass or the uh, volumetric flask we looked at earlier in the video. So the volumetric pipette, it's a pipette. It's gonna be used to transfer volume of liquid from one container to another, but it's gonna transfer a precise volume of liquid. Okay, so remember we have the pipette, which is just for transferring liquid, micro pipette, which is transferring a small amount of liquid, and then volumetric pipette, which is transferring a very precise volume of liquid. Sort of an uh, odd piece of equipment here. This is called a petri dish, which I'm sure you've seen maybe on TV shows or movies or something. It's simply uh, two pieces of plastic lids that cover one over the other, and their function is we use them to grow bacteria. Sometimes it's called bacterial cultures. Uh, so basically, we create this little artificial environment. Uh, the lid covers it so that we're not worried about anything escaping, hopefully, from our little Petri dish. And we can test things on that bacteria. So it's used to grow bacterial cultures. These guys are called forceps. I know in the regular world we would call those tweezers, but in science we call them forceps. Why? I don't know. I don't make the rules but that's what they're called. They're called forceps. They'll be called that in your labs, and they should be referred to that on your quiz. These guys are called wire brushes, and they are used to clean glassware. If you imagine like a test tube or an Erlenmeyer flask, something that's you know, too small to get in with a sponge or something like that, you would use these wire brushes to clean it. So for cleaning glassware, that's their function. This one has a name that is pretty uh, indicative of what it does. It is called a scupula. It's this sort of metal kind of half uh, circle shape, and we use it to scoop out chemicals. So it's used to scoop things, the scupula for scooping. You should expect thermometer. That'll definitely be on your quiz. That should be a gimme, because we all know what thermometers are used for. They are used to determine the temperature of something. They take to the temperature. They determine temperature. Safety goggles you'll be using quite frequently in the lab. Uh, they protect your eyes. That is their function. They protect the eyes. Now we'll talk about two pieces of equipment, both a hot plate and a magnetic stirring rod. This guy is a hot plate, and you'll notice it has two knobs. It has a heat knob, which I was turning, and then a stirring knob, 
So it makes the hot plate hot, and it can also use a stir. So now how does it stir something? Well, it does it with this guy, a magnetic stirring rod. The function of a magnetic stirring rod is to stir items on a hot plate, like this beaker. This beaker is going to be placed on the hot plate, and if I put my magnetic stirring rod into that liquid, I can now not only heat it on the hot plate using that knob, but I could also just stir it. I could do both or one or the other. I can stir it slowly or I can stir it much more rapidly. So the hot plate has two functions, both to stir an item and to heat it. And the magnetic stirring rod, its function is to stir items on a hot plate. This is called a centrifuge, that's its name, and its function is to separate liquids by density. To separate liquids by density. How it does that is actually fairly simple. It has a lid that you open. You then close it, and it locks in place, as you just heard. That knob adjusts the speed, and that knob adjusts how long you're going to have it spin for. You can spin it slowly, or you can spin it much more rapidly. You can spin for a set time, or you can stop it quickly by just kicking it's done. Now the one safety issue with this is that you can open it while it's still spinning. You're able to hear that it's still spinning. You never ever want to put your hand into a moving centrifuge. So that's a safety precaution there for you. So centrifuge, and it separates liquids by density. This item is called a mortar and pestle. It is used to crush and grind things. You simply grab on to this guy, put whatever it is that you want to grind up into the bowl, and then smash and grind it until it's a powder or whatever consistency you're looking for. That's a mortar and pestle used to crush and grind things. This is a Bunsen burner. Uh, we use it. Its function is to provide us with a controlled flame. That's obviously the important piece is it's controlled. Anyone can start a fire. You simply plug it in to the gas. You turn the gas on. You would then use the igniter to ignite there. You'd have a very stable controlled flame. So the Bunsen burner, its function is to provide us with a controlled flame. This item is called a warm water bath. Uh, fairly simple. Uh, these lids come off and inside is a tray that you fill with water, you set it to whatever temperature you desire, and it keeps those things warm. So its function is it heats water to a constant temperature. And then that way we can test the effect of temperature on certain things. We can just put whatever we want into well, usually a test tube, put that test tube in the warm water, and we can heat it for as long as we want at whatever temperature we want. So its function is to heat water to a constant temperature. These are definitely two important ones that you'll be using a number of times in biology class. They're both microscopes, but on the quiz you can't just say microscope. You have to know the difference. One is called a compound light microscope. The other one is called a dissection microscope. The big difference lies in the magnification that they can magnify to and what you would use them for. So why is this one called a compound light microscope? The reason is fairly simple. It's because there are multiple lenses. There are these lenses here, and then these, these lenses here, and the light comes up through the first lenses, then through the next lenses to your eyes. So it's called a compound light microscope because we're using multiple lenses. Uh, this uh, function, the function I want you to know for this guy, the compound light microscope, is that it magnifies very small things. Now the big difference with this guy over here, the dissection microscope, is think about if you want to look at what the surface of your hand looked like. You couldn't put your hand on this part of the microscope right here and look at it. Why? Because the light would come up and it wouldn't get to your hand because your hand is not transparent. And so no light would get to your eye and you'd never be able to see what the surface of your hand looked like. However, this microscope will allow you to do that. You put your hand right there, the light bounces off of your hand and then it goes up into your eyes so the key difference here it doesn't magnify things nearly as high with these microscopes we can go to a thousand times magnification with these guys you're looking at typically more like 10 20 maybe 40 times magnification but the function over here but the important one I want you to know it allows you to magnify things that are not transparent that's the key the not transparent part so it allows you to think, see small things that are not transparent these two items will be used uh, in the dissections that we do. Dissection tray, scalpel. Uh, your scalpel 
Uh, it is important that you call it that. It is not called a knife. You will not get any points for calling it a knife. It is called a scalpel. Uh, its function is for cutting things, obviously. The dissection tray, uh, its function is simply you put uh, whatever it is that you're going to be dissecting into the tray, and then that way it keeps your lab station clean. So uh, function is that it keeps your lab bench clean. So all the liquids and stuff that come out of whatever it is you're dissecting stays in the tray. All the gross stuff stays in here, and the rest of the table is clean. That's the function for the dissecting tray. So this guy is a test tube, and we'll be using them a number of times in the, the lab. Test tubes, their function, very simple, to observe chemical reactions. So we take some chemical, uh, we add something to it, there's some interesting chemical reaction that's happening, it allows us to observe it very nicely, as you can see, in a safe way. So test tube, used to observe chemical reactions. This item is called a test tube rack and it should be pretty simple. Its function is simply to hold the test tubes. The test tubes go right in here. What an awesome drawing of a test tube that is. The test tubes go there. It, it holds them. That's its function.